Welcome to episode 24 of Math 1050 College Algebra. I'm Dennis Allison. Uh, you know, this episode is called The Algebra of Matrices, but there are actually a number of things we'll talk about in this, in this episode in addition to the algebra of matrices. Uh, if, you look, if we look at the objectives for this episode, first we do matrix arithmetic, or what you might call the algebra of matrices, but then we'll also look at the inverse of a matrix and we'll look at solutions of what we call matrix equations. So all of these topics will be covered today and uh, they're all somewhat related. So let's begin with uh, matrix arithmetic. Now, uh, if you look on the green screen here, I have three matrices uh, written down, matrix A, matrix B, and matrix C. This first matrix we say is a two by three matrix because uh, it has two rows, three columns. The second matrix is a two by three matrix, and the last one is a two by two, two by two matrix. Now, we can add matrices only if they have exactly the same dimensions. So for example, I can add A and B, but I couldn't add, uh, say, A and C. And if I want to add A plus B together, then I would be adding the matrix 4, 2, negative 5, and 1, 0, 3. I would be adding that to the matrix 4, 7, 1 negative 1, negative 3, 6. Now, the way the addition is carried out is really pretty, pretty straightforward. What I do is I add the corresponding coordinates. So, for example, in the first row, first column, I have 4s. So what I do is I add those together, and I get the entry in the first row, first column of the sum. So these are referred to as the 1, 1 entries. Row 1, column 1, the 1, 1 entry, and this is the 1, 1 entry of the sum. Uh, to get the next entry, what I'll do is add the corresponding entries from the other matrices. So 2 plus 7 is 9, so a 9 goes here. And uh, for the last position, negative 5 plus 1 is negative 4. So you can see why they have to have the same dimensions so that I don't run out of, uh, run out of information for each, for each entry. Um, what number would go in the 2, 1 position right here? Zero. That'd be zero, exactly. And what number would go in the 2-2 two, two position, second row, second column? Negative 3. Negative 3. Yeah, very good. And what number goes in the 2-3 position? 9. 9, right. So that would be the sum. Uh, do you think the answer would be different if I had been adding B plus A? Would I have gotten a different answer? No. No, no we wouldn't because, uh, because the, the additions can be, uh, can, can, we can write the additions in either order and we'll get the same answer. So A plus B and B plus A are the same thing. Uh, what if I wanted to add A plus C? Well, of course, these matrices are not in, of the same dimensions, so what I would just write here is not defined. Um, so there's just no way that we could, we could add those together. Um, what if I were to take uh, B minus A? B minus A. Well, let's see, if I put B first, that would be 4, 7, 1 negative 1, negative 3, 6, and now I'll subtract off A, 4, 2, negative 5, 1, 0, 3. Uh, I think as you would probably imagine, if you add matrices by adding corresponding coordinates, then you subtract matrices by subtracting corresponding coordinates. So the first entry of the difference, which will also be a 2 by 3 matrix, the first entry will be 4 minus 4 is 0. Um, who can tell me the rest of that row? Uh, 5 and five. Mm -hmm. negative 4. Uh, no, oh. not negative 4. Be careful. 6. 6, six. yeah, because we're subtracting a negative 5, so that, that'll be a 6 there. Um, and who can tell me the last row, the second row? Negative 2. Negative 2, yep. Negative 3. Uh, negative 3, yep. 3. And 3, exactly. Okay. Um, now, there's another way that you can combine matrices, or at least change matrices, and this is to multiply by a constant. So for example, what if I wanted to multiply matrix A by 4? Now, sometimes uh, when you put a constant in front of a matrix, in some textbooks, you'll see this called a scalar, S-C-A-L-A-R, a scalar. So we're multiplying by a scalar, and this means 4 times matrix A, 4, 2, negative 5, 1, 0, Three. And when you multiply by a scalar, what you do is you multiply every entry by that number. So I get 16, 8, negative 20, 4, 0, 
and 12. This is just how scalar multiplication of matrices is, uh, is uh, defined in algebra. Okay, so it's very easy to multiply by a scalar. You just multiply every entry by that, by that amount. Okay, let's go to the next graphic. And uh, you'll see these same matrices displayed here, A, B, and C. We have just found A plus B, uh, B minus A, and 4A. The next thing I want to do is look at the product of matrices. And I have three products listed here, A, B, C, A, and A, C. Uh, let me pick C, A, first of all. That's the middle one there. Let's come to the green screen, and, let me, and I'll show how we multiply two matrices. So if I write C, A, I mean, this is the product of C times A. So uh, matrix C is 2, 1, 3, negative 2. And matrix A is 4, 2, negative 5, 1, 0, 3. Now, it's only under certain conditions that I can multiply matrices together. You notice this first one is a 2 by 2, and the second one is a 2 by 3. And if I, if I multiply these matrices, the number of columns of the first matrix has to equal the number of rows in the second matrix. In other words, these two numbers must be alike. And my answer is going to have dimensions, and I take the two outer numbers, 2 by 3. So my answer is going to be a 2 by 3 matrix. Two rows, three columns. So it's going to look like this. Now, if these two numbers had not been alike in the middle, the two columns of C and the two rows of A, then this multiplication is undefined, sort of like that addition a while ago or that subtraction was undefined. Um, okay, now, here's how the multiplication works. To get the entry in the first row, first column, right here, first row, first column, I'm going to multiply the first row of C times the first column of A, and I do it entry-wise. So I take 2 times 8 plus 1 times 1. Let me just write that down below. Two, uh, excuse me, 2 times 4 plus 1 times 1. I take the first numbers and multiply, and I take the second numbers and multiply, but I'm using a row and a column, and I get a total of 9. Now, to come to the next entry, this entry is in the first row, second column right here. And so I'm going to multiply the first row times the second column. And let's see what we get here. 2 times 2 plus 1 times 0. 2 times 2 plus 1 times 0 is 4. So I get a 4 there. And to get the entry, to get the number that goes in this position, I'll put a question mark on it. This is in the first row and the third column. I multiply the first row times the third column. I realize this sounds really peculiar. You're probably thinking I'm making this up as I go along. But there's actually good reasons for multiplying matrices in this way. Uh, well, let's see. The first row times the third column. Can anyone tell me what that answer will be? Negative 7. Uh, it'll be negative 10 plus 3 is negative 7. That's exactly right. OK, does anybody here have a question about that? OK, now to get the second row, let's go to the entry right here. And this is in the second row, first column. So as you might guess, I'm going to multiply the second row times the first column. And that will be 12 plus negative 2 is 10. OK, now I'm wondering who can tell me what entry goes in the second row, second column? What number goes there? Six. 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 Very good. Six. Because we're multiplying second row, second column. That's going to be 6 plus 0 is 6. And the last entry will be what? Uh, negative 15 minus 6 is negative 21. Yeah. Here's negative 15, and here's negative 6. And I add those together, and I get negative 21. OK. Now, what if I had reversed the order of that multiplication and written A times C? Well, let's see now. A would be 4, 2, negative 5, 1, 0, 3. And C would be 2, 1, 3, negative 2. And you notice this matrix is 2 by 3, and this matrix is 2 by 2. And when I compare the columns of A and the rows of C, those don't match. Those don't match. So therefore, this multiplication is undefined. Undefined. There is no product A times C. Now, you might say, well, Dennis, is there anything like that in ordinary arithmetic that would that would correspond to this. The only thing I can think of is that you can't divide by 0 in ordinary arithmetic. Um, and in this case, you can't multiply uh, a 2 by 3 and a 2 by 2 matrix in that order. So 
C times A is defined, but A times C is not defined. So we can't expect that when you, when you, when you commute the order that you get the same answer. In fact, you may, not only will you not get the same answer, most likely, you may not even get an answer at all in one of these orders. Uh, what if I were to multiply two new matrices together? Let me say, let, let me erase this example up above. And um, what if I were going to multiply a two three by three matrices? Let's say for my first matrix, it's one, one, zero, two, one, negative two, three, zero, five. And I'm going to multiply it times another matrix. Um, Let's say it's uh, 2, 5, negative 3, 0, negative 1, 1, 1, 1, 4. Okay, the first matrix, I think I'll call this one D and call this one E, since we have an A, B, and a C already up there. Um, the first matrix is 3 by 3, the second matrix is 3 by 3, so is this multiplication defined? It is, because I have a 3, 3, those match up. And what will be the dimensions of my answer? It'll be three by three. It's the two remaining numbers. So when I finish, I expect to see a three by three product. Um, and that's because I'm taking the two outer numbers down here. Okay, now to get the entry in the, in the one, one position, first row, first column, I multiply the first row times the first column. And I get two plus zero plus zero is two. I can make that a little bit larger, I think. You know, I, I think you can see now why the number of columns, the number of columns of the first matrix has to equal the number of rows of the second matrix, because I have to get these things to match up exactly with no numbers left over. So I need to have three columns here if I have three rows of the next one. So by matching these numbers, it just merely means that when I multiply, this will, these will end together. OK, to get the entry in the first row, second column, I multiply the first row times the second column. That'll be 5 minus 1 plus 0 is 4. <coughs> OK, let me let uh, each of you and the people at home think about what's the value of the entry in the 1, 3 position before we say it out loud. And what do you think? Negative. Negative two, does everybody agree with that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I yep. think that's negative two. Okay, um, let's look at the entry right here. What do you think this one would be? Zero. Two. Uh, well, two I, I get two, yeah, let's just check that. Uh, now I'm multiplying the second row times the first column. Second row, first column. That's gonna be four plus zero minus two is two, yeah. Okay, let's go ahead and wind this one on up. What number goes in the middle, the 2, 2 position? Second row, second column. Uh, what I get is 10 minus 1 minus 2 is 7. And then in the 2, 3 position, second row, third column, I get negative 6 plus 1, that's negative 5, minus 8 is negative 13. And then on the bottom row, I get 6 plus 0 plus 5 is 11. And then I get 15 plus 0 plus 5 is 20. And finally, I get negative 9 plus 0 plus 20 is 11, is 11 there. OK, so this is the product uh, d, e. I'll just write that above it. This is d times e. Now, you know, if I reverse the order of this one and if I compute e, d, uh, I would have to reverse my matrices. And generally, I'll get a different answer. Now this is important to know for some of the work that lies ahead is to know that we cannot generally commute the order of matrices when we multiply, but if we're adding, we can commute the order. We saw that a moment ago. A plus B and B plus A were the same. Okay, let's see what we get here for um, this new three by three matrix. If you're wondering why is it three by three, we'll see once again, this is a three by three, this is a three by three, these numbers match. So the multiplication is defined, and the outer numbers tell me this will be a 3 by 3. OK, the first entry here will be, uh, will be what? Three. Uh, let's see here. Uh, 2 plus 10 is 12. 12 minus 9 is 3. You're right. 
See, it's, it's already different. We got a two before. Um, in the next position, in the one, two position, I get uh, two plus five plus zero is seven. Two plus five, yeah, seven. And what number is going to go here? Zero. Let's see. No. Uh, not zero. We get zero minus 10 minus 15. Minus 25. Minus 25, I think. Does everybody agree with that? Yeah. Okay. Uh, for the second row, in the first position, they'll see that's uh, second row, first column, second row, first column. Zero minus two plus three is one. And the next entry is zero minus one plus zero is minus one. And then zero plus two plus five is seven. Okay, and on the last row, <coughs> let's see, the first position, that's third row, first column. Third row, first column. So I get one plus two plus twelve is 15. And then I get 1 plus 1 plus 0 is 2. And the last entry is, um, who wants to take a wild stab at that one? Is it 18? 18 is 18, yeah. Now, you know, when you compare these, it doesn't look like, not only are the matrices not alike, they don't have anything alike. Sometimes we might get a few entries to be alike, but in this case, they're just totally different. Uh, we, we say that, that two matrices are equal, if and only if, they have the same dimensions, three by three, three by three, so yep, these have the same dimensions, and corresponding entries are identical. Well, here the corresponding entries are not identical. In fact, none of them uh, are like the corresponding entries of the other. Okay, this is how you multiply matrices. Now, there is a special matrix for multiplication, uh, a special group of matrices known as the identity matrices. Let me give you an example. Um, so, what we're describing here is something referred to the identity matrix. Actually, there are quite a few identity matrices, matrices but this one I'm going to call the 2 by 2 identity matrix the two by two identity matrix. It's abbreviated as I sub two. And here's what it looks like. It's a square matrix. It's always a square matrix. And if I put a subscript two, it means it's a two by two, not a three by three. And you put ones down the main diagonal and you put zeros everywhere else. Now, let me show you why it's called the identity matrix. That's sort of a, sort of a mysterious name. Look what happens if I go up here and take matrix C and multiply it times I2. C times I2. Well now matrix C is 2, 1, 3, negative 2. And I sub 2 is 1, 0, 0, 1. Now look what happens when I multiply here. Um, let's see, first of all, this is a 2 by 2 matrix. This is a 2 by 2 matrix. These numbers match up. So the multiplication is defined and the answer will be 2 by 2. Okay, so two by two, right here. And the first entry, let's see, that's first row, first column. I get two plus zero is two. Uh, the entry in the first row, second column is zero plus one is one. And the entry in the second row, first column, second row, first column is three plus zero is three. And the last entry is 0 plus negative 2 is negative 2. What do you notice about that answer? It's identical to the first one. It, it's the same as the original matrix C. So I is called the identity matrix because actually it's sort of like in arithmetic when you multiply 4 times 1, you get 4. Well, in this case, if you multiply C times I2, you get C. So this behaves sort of like the number 1 in arithmetic. It allows C to keep its identity. You know, actually, this makes me so mad because C, uh, I doesn't keep its identity. It's called the identity matrix, but actually I sacrifices itself and it lets C remain the same. You know, it, I really kind of feel sorry for I sub 2. Uh, what happens if we multiply it in the other order? Uh, let's just try it in this order. This would be 1, 0, 0, 1. 
and uh, 2, 1, 3, negative 2. And I tell you what, without going through all the multiplication steps, I think you'll be able to verify on your own that when you multiply, you still get 2, 1, 3, and negative 2. So you still get C. So the identity matrix uh, it has this property, whether you put it on the left or the right. Here's one of the rare cases where um, when you can multiply these two matrices in either order, and you do get the same answer. So these two matrices commute. Generally, the multiplication doesn't commute. Um, if, we, um, if we were to see a reference to I sub 3, that would be the 3 by 3 identity matrix. And it has 1's down the main diagonal, and it has zeros everywhere else. And you see, if you were to multiply uh, A times I3, you remember matrix A up here? If you were to multiply A times I3, that multiplication would be defined because this is a 2 by 3 matrix, this is a 3 by 3 matrix, and I don't think you'd be surprised to find out that the answer will be an A. But if you reverse the order, the multiplication isn't defined because this is 3 by 3, 3 by 3, and this is 2 by 3. The multiplication isn't defined. But if I put I sub 2 here, I sub 2 is a 2 by 2. Now the multiplication is defined. I'll get a 2 by 3 answer, and the 2 by 3 answer that I get will be A again. So there is an identity you can put on the right of A to get A, but there's a different identity that you put on the left in the second product to get A because A, doesn't, because a, isn't, a, square, uh, isn't a square matrix. Okay, uh, we'll have to hold this thought now about uh, the identity matrix because it's going to become uh, very important in just a few minutes. But uh, first, let's go to the next, to the next graphic. And I want to insert uh, another piece of information that's going to become important uh, later in this episode. This has to do with matrix equations. Um, now, this problem says to write the matrix uh, to, to write the system of equations 5x plus 3y equals 4, and 2x minus y is 17. Write this as a matrix equation. Now, let, let me show you what I mean by this. Uh, this is going to be an equation, so I'll need an equal sign. But, but uh, I'm going to be putting matrices in the equations rather than, uh, rather than constants and variables, just the constants and variables. Here's how I do it. Uh, I'm first of all going to make a 2 by 2 matrix out of the coefficients. They are uh, 5, 3, 2, and negative 1. So 5, 3, 2, and negative 1. And then I'm going to put another matrix right beside it that uh, is made up of the variables, and I'm going to write them in a column. Now, you notice the first matrix is 2 by 2. The second matrix is uh, two rows, one column. That's, a, that's called a 2 by 1. And so this multiplication is defined. And when I finish, I'm going to get a 2 by 1 answer. So over here, I'll write another 2 by 1 matrix. But in this matrix, I'm going to put the constants that I see at the ends of the linear equations, 4 and 17. Now here I have an equation, but the entries are matrices rather than numbers, and so this is referred to as a uh, matrix equation there. And look what happens when I multiply. If I take the first row times the first column, I get 5x plus 3y, and that should give me the first entry over here, 4, because this is in the first row, first column. The first row times the first column gives me the 1, 1 entry. 5x plus 3y is 4. And that's exactly what my equation said, my first equation set up above. And if I take the second product, the second row times the first column, I get the entry in the second row, first column. I get 2x plus negative 1y is 17. Or in other words, 2x minus y is 17. So my, my point is, the system of equations that I've written up here can be represented as a matrix equation in this form and I'll come back to this again in a moment. We're just sort of setting up some of the information later in this episode. So this is the matrix equation represented. Um, let's see. Let me, let me do one more of these. And I'll just do this one on the green screen. Uh, okay, class, I'm going to need your help here. I need an, a linear equation with three unknowns in it. Let's say um, A, B, and C. 
So uh, can somebody tell me a linear equation with three unknowns? Just whatever. What's your favorite linear equation, Stephen? 3x. Okay, plus, let's, let's use a, b, and c. Oh, a, b, and c. Yeah. 3a okay. plus 7b minus 13z. Minus 13c. C. C. Okay. Equals? 20. Equals 20. Okay. You're not going to believe this. That's my favorite uh, linear equation as well. I, I didn't think he would think of it, but he must be reading my mind. Okay, uh, Sam, can you give us another uh, linear equation with three unknowns? Sure. Negative 2a. Negative 2a, okay. Minus 5b. Minus 5b. Plus 13c. Plus 13c, okay, and what's it going to equal? 28. 28, 28, okay. And now I need one more. I tell you what, on the next one, just to make it different, leave out one of the variables. Only put two of the variables in there. Ginny, what would you say? 2a plus uh, c. 2a plus c. Equals zero. Equals zero. Wow, she really got right down to the, <laughs> to the basics there. Okay, this is a uh, this is a three by three system of equations. Uh, system of linear equations. I want to write this as a matrix equation. So what I do first of all is I write the coefficient matrix. So only the coefficients go in here. Three, seven, negative 13. Negative two, negative five, 13, 2, 0, and 1. The reason I ask you to leave out a variable is just so I'd have a chance to put a 0 in here to hold that place open. I'm going to multiply it by what I'll call the unknown matrix, the unknowns. That'll be A, B, and C. And I'm going to set it equal to what I'll call the constant matrix, and those will be the constants listed over here, 20, 28, and 0. Now, this looks like it's something totally different from what's above, but it's actually equivalent to it. Because look, if I multiply the first row times the first column, I should get the entry in the 1, 1 position. That would say 3a plus 7b minus 13c is 20. And that's exactly what our first equation set up above. If I take the second row times that column, negative 2a minus 5b plus 13c, that should give me 28. Yep, that's exactly right. And if you multiply the bottom row times this column, that's the third row, first column, I should get the entry in the third row, first column, zero. And that will be this entry right here. So my, my point is that a matrix equation can be used to represent a system of linear equations, and we'll come back to this again in, in just a moment, too. So uh, hold these ideas in mind. We've talked about uh, sums, differences, products of matrices. We've talked about scalar multiples of matrices. Then we talked about uh, identity matrices, the I sub 2, I sub 3, and now we've talked about matrix equations. So you might say, well, Dennis, where is all this uh, leading us? Well, it leads us to the next graphic, actually. And uh, this is the beginning of the uh, revelation of what this is all about. The inverse of a matrix. <clears throat> now, the, the, the problem here is says to find the inverse of a 2 by 2 matrix A, whose entries are 2, 1, 5, 3, if it exists. Now you might say, well, wait a minute, hold on. What is the inverse of a matrix? Well, let me explain. Suppose I have a matrix um, of the form A, B, C, D. And I'll call this matrix capital A for a moment. Now suppose there is another matrix, I'll call it capital B, whose entries are X, Y, Z, W. And suppose these two matrices have the property that if you take A times B, you get the two by two identity matrix. I'm saying the two by two because these guys are two by twos. And by the way, if you do this in the reverse order, B times A is also the identity matrix. Then if this is the case, that these two matrices have a product that's the identity in either order, then B is said to be the inverse of A, and another way of writing B is to call it A with a little negative one in the air. Now, that's not an exponent, it's a symbol. This doesn't mean one over matrix A, because there's no such thing as one over a matrix, but this just means this, this matrix is the inverse of matrix A. Let me just give you an example. Um, suppose matrix A is the matrix that was just in that graphic. Let me just write this one down for you. Uh, matrix A was 2, 1, 5, 3. And I'm trying to figure out if it has an inverse. 
if it has an inverse. Now you might say, well, I'm not quite sure what you mean by an inverse. Well, what I'm saying is, is it possible that there is a matrix of the form uh, x, y, z, w, so that the product of these two matrices, A times A inverse, is the identity matrix. I'll put a question mark, because I don't know if that's possible yet or not. Well, if this were going to be the case, then A, which has these entries, and A inverse, which we don't really know what its entries would be, would equal the identity matrix 1, 0, 0, 1. Yeah, that's the I sub 2 we were talking about. Okay, but again, I'm not sure if this is possible or not. Well, if it were possible, then the first row times the first column would have to equal 1. So 2x plus z would be 1. Let me just write that down here. 2x plus z would have to be 1. Does everybody agree with that? You'd have to get a 1 there. Uh, by the way, the second row times the first column should be 0. 5x plus 3z should be 0. 5x plus 3z should be 0. Well, now, I'm thinking here's a system of equations, a 2 by 2 system of equations. I should be able to solve that by any number of methods. Most recently, we've talked about Gaussian elimination with back substitution. We've talked about Gauss-Jordan uh, as a method for solving this. And, of course, you've learned methods in intermediate algebra for solving 2 by 2 systems. But let's go further. Uh, look at the entry over here, the 0. If I take the first row times the second column, I should get 0. Now that says 2y plus w is 0. 2y plus w should be 0. And if I take the second row times the second column, what should I get? 5y plus 3w yeah. equals 1. Should be 1, yeah, because that's the one I have right here. Okay, so if I could just solve these, I would know what the entries of the inverse is if there's a solution. See, if there's no solution, then there's no inverse. But if there is a solution, I could fill in those entries, and I would know, I would know the so-called inverse matrix. Now, let me just uh, remove this middle part, and uh, I'm going to come back and uh, fill in something, of course, in that just a second here. But what I'm thinking is, I have two systems of equations, and they have the same coefficients. Look, 2 and 5 and 1 and 3. So why don't we solve a simultaneous system of linear equations like we did at the, at the end of the previous episode? You remember the way we said we would do that is I would put my coefficients in front, 2, 1, 5, 3. And I would put these constants in the first column. But then here's another system that has the same coefficients, 2, 5, 1, 3 but different constants on the end, so I'll just put those in the second column. And this way, I'll be solving both of these at the same time. Um, when I solve to get answers here, I'll be getting answers for x and z, and when I get the numbers here, I'll be getting answers for y and w, and I'll know x and z and y and w. Okay, um, and let me just move that up here. We said that was x, y, Z, W. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is solve these simultaneously using this, uh, this extended matrix right here. Now, by the way, just for future reference, look at, the, look at this first 2 by 2 matrix here. What matrix is that? A. That's matrix A. So if I want to do this again in the future, I can save time and just put matrix A in front there. And what matrix is this over here on the right? I sub 2. It's, it's the identity matrix. Yeah, I sub 2. I'll just put an I there. Um, but basically, you put matrix A on the left, you put the identity on the right, and you start reducing it. Okay, now when I solve this, if I use Gauss-Jordan elimination, here's what I would like to see at the end. I'd like to see a 1, a 0, a 1, and a 0. And that way, I know that I've solved for my variables, uh, x and y, or z and w, and I could read off my answers. Now, the answers that I get here would be the answers for x and z. And the answers that I get here would be my answers for y and w. So if I can somehow make this become, um, become the identity, where it was originally a, then what I will get will be uh, x, z, 
y, w, you know, this will be a inverse. And all the entries will be displayed exactly in the form that I would see them in a inverse. So here's what I'll do in the future. If I want to find the inverse of a, I'll put matrix A on the left, I'll put the identity on the right. I'm going to reduce this. I'll do this in just a second. I'm going to reduce this and so that I get the identity on the left and A inverse will be on the right. And the answer here, that'll be X. The answer here will be Z. The answer here will be Y and the answer here will be W. And the numbers will be displayed exactly as they are in A inverse, so that is matrix A inverse. Okay, so let's solve this simultaneous system. <coughs> um, I'd like to get a one in this position. I'd like to get a one in this position. Anybody have an idea how I could get a one in that position? Uh, there are many ways to do it, but what would you do? Divide by two. Divide by two. Yeah, let's go ahead and just face the music. Why don't we just divide by two? It's only a two by two system. So I'm going to take one half of row one, and that's going to be one, one half, one half, and zero. That's a one half there. You know, we've been avoiding fractions all along because we, we generally make more mistakes with fractions than we do with, with integers. Uh, but for a two by two, I don't think this should get too complicated. I'm going to rewrite the second row, five, three, zero, one, and continue. Now, you know, the, in the Gauss-Jordan elimination procedure, after I get a one, I get a zero below it. So I want to get a zero here. I think it's pretty obvious that I'll want to take row two plus negative five times row one. Uh, one, one half, one half, zero. And then I'll get um, zero. Negative five times this plus five is zero. Now negative five times a half plus three is one half. And then negative five times a half plus zero is negative five halves. And negative 5 times 0 plus 1 is 1. Now, you see how when, when, you, when you let a fraction get its foot in the door, it begins to accumulate pretty rapidly. Now I have four fractions, not just two. OK, well, we'll continue. I want to get a 1 here. What do you recommend? Multiply by 2. Multiply by 2, sure. So 2 times row 2 is uh, 0, 1, negative 5, 2. I haven't changed the top row, so that's going to be a 1 and a 1 half and a 1 half and a 0. Well, you know, we're almost there. I've got my 1 here. I want to get a 0 up above. So I think what I should do is multiply the second row times negative a half and add it to the top row. So this is going to be row 1 plus negative 1 half of row 2. I think we just have enough room here to do this. Um, so negative one half times zero plus one is one. Negative one half plus a half is zero. Negative one half of five plus a half is, um, three. Um, yep, you're right, three. Sorry, but I had to wait so long on that. And <laughs> uh, Okay, and finally, what number is going to go in place of the zero? Negative one. Negative one, yeah. And I'll rewrite the bottom row, 0, 1, negative 5, 2. OK, now, <clears throat> I have my identity matrix on the left. <clears throat> now, if I'm looking at the first system of equations, this says x equals 3, uh, z equals negative 5. x equals 3, z equals negative 5. If I'm looking at the second system of equations, this says that y is negative 5 and w is 2. y is negative 5, w is 2. Well, if you just fill those in, that's exactly the way you see the numbers distributed here. 3, negative 1, negative 5, and 2. That is the inverse matrix of A. Now, if A did not have an inverse matrix, and a lot of matrices don't have inverse matrices, what, what would happen is I would get no solution. I would have gotten something like this. And once I get two zeros, there's no way I can ever get a one there and I'd have to stop and say no solution. And what that, what that would tell me is this matrix didn't have an inverse, but our matrix A does. Uh, now, let's just check and see if this is the true inverse. Can anyone suggest a way to, find, to show that this is the inverse without just going through that same process all over again? Together to see if yeah, and I should be able to multiply them in e either order, and what should I get when I multiply them? 
The identity matrix. We should get the identity matrix. Let's just check that and see. Uh, okay, I have A times A inverse. I'm thinking I should get the identity matrix, I sub 2. Well, let's just check it out. Here's matrix A, 2, 1, 5, 3. Here's matrix uh, A inverse, 3, negative 1, negative 5, 2. And when I multiply them together, uh, let's see, this is a 2 by 2, this is a 2 by 2. So my answer will be a 2 by 2, okay? So, four entries. Uh, what's the first entry going to be? Well, let's see, that'll be 6 minus 5 is a 1. That's encouraging. Uh, the entry in the first row, second column, first row, second column, would be uh, negative 2 plus 2 is 0. That's even more encouraging. Uh, the entry right here in the first row, second column, first row, second column is negative 15, oh, excuse me, 15 plus negative 15 is 0. And in the last entry, it's negative 5 plus 6 is 1. Yes, yes, we're, we're excited at this point. Oh, man, be still my heart. Uh, and you know what? Without, without taking the time to do it, if you multiplied these in the reverse order, you would get uh, the identity matrix once again. Uh, but I, I think our time is probably better spent on how we compute this inverse matrix than just verifying that it's the inverse by multiplication. So I tell you what, let's go to the next graphic. Oh, I t uh, before I leave the screen, let me just mention one thing. I'm going to be using this inverse in a moment. So um, uh, there's, there's a later graphic that's going to come up, and I'm going to have this matrix A, and I'm just going to steal this inverse because we've just computed it. So at that point, this is where I got it from. Okay, let's go to the next graphic. Uh, this is a bigger problem, and I'm going to have to go over here to the marker board to work it. This says, find the inverse of this matrix B, whose entries are 1, negative 2, negative 4, 2, negative 3, negative 6, negative 3, 6, 15, uh, if it exists. Now, the, the portion about if it exists means that when I go to reduce this matrix, if I can't get the identity on the left-hand side, uh, that means there is no inverse. Okay, so my matrix B, I better copy that up here. My matrix B is uh, 1, negative 2, negative 4, uh, 2, negative 3, negative 6, and negative 3, 6, and uh, 15. Okay, um, I want to find out if this matrix has an inverse, and the way I do it is I make a matrix with B on the left and I sub 3 on the right. Now that's actually going to be a 3 by 6 matrix. It's going to have 3 rows but 6 columns. And I'm going to reduce it so that I get the identity on the left. At least I hope I can get the identity on the left. And something's going to come up on the right. And that will be B inverse. If I can get the identity here, then this will be the inverse of B uh, over there. So the only question is, can we do it? Is that possible? Well, let's try it and see. <clears throat> First of all, I'll enter matrix B on the left-hand side. Just like we said, I'll put matrix B on the left-hand side. And on the right-hand side, I'm going to put the identity matrix 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. Okay, and now I start my quest to make this the identity matrix. Now. Uh, there are basically three rules I can use. I can uh, interchange two rows. I can uh, multiply a row by a non-zero scalar, non-zero constant. And I can take a multiple of one row and add it to another row. Those are, the, those are the three elementary row operations we've been seeing now for a couple episodes. If you do anything else, you'll destroy the solution. But if you stick with those things, the solution remains intact. Well, I've got a one there, so we're on a, we're on a good start. Let's get a zero here and a zero here. Uh, let's take row 2 plus uh, negative 2 times row 1. And let's take row 3 plus 3 times row 1. <clears throat> By the way, you don't have to make all this little notation in front of your, uh, of your steps like I do. But I fill that in so that if you look at this later and if you're wondering, now, how did he, how, what did he do next? Well, this is supposed to be sort of a guide to help you follow the, the footprints. Now, the top row isn't changing, so I'll just rewrite that. But the second row changes. It's going to be uh, 0 and 1 and 2 and negative 2 and 1 and 0. 
Okay, and the next row is going to be 0, 0, 3. 0, 0, 3. And the next row, or the, and the rest of the row is going to be 3, 0, 1. I'm going kind of fast now, so you may want to go back and check these steps later, but uh, just in the interest of time, I'm trying to move us on through this. Okay, so I've now finished the first column. It's okay. And the second column is well underway. I have a 1 and I have a 0. I need a 0 up above. So what let's do here is take uh, row 1 plus 2 times row 2. So we're not going to change row 3. And we're not going to change row 2. But we are going to change row 1. Uh, let's see, we're doubling row 2 and adding, so I'm going to get uh, 1, 0, 0. 1, 0, 0. And then I'm going to get um, double and add negative 3, 2, 0. Negative 3, 2, 0. Okay, so now I need to get a 1 right here. You notice we always get the 1's and we get the zeros afterwards. And I think the only way to do this is to multiply by a third. So let's, let's continue back here. Uh, one third times row three. So we have one, zero, zero, negative three, two, zero. Zero, one, two. And now, zero, zero, one. One, zero, one third. Okay, we're almost there. We just have to get a zero in this spot and I'll have the identity matrix here. So it looks like we will be able to get the, the I sub 3 matrix here, and so we will get an inverse. So I think we can see already this, this matrix does have an inverse. Uh, I'm going to take row 2 and add on negative 2 times row 3. Yeah, negative 2 times row 3, that'll cancel out that 2. Row 1 will remain the same. Uh, row 3 will remain the same. But row 2, row 2 is going to be different. Let's see. 0, 1. Now we're doubling and subtracting there. That'll be a 0. So 0, 1, 0. And this is going to be um, negative 4 and 1 and negative 2 thirds. Negative 2 thirds. So. <clears throat> This tells me several things. First of all, this matrix has an inverse. And secondly, that is what the inverse is. So let's just write that up above. Uh, B inverse is the matrix negative 3, 2, 0, negative 4, 1, negative 2 thirds, 1, 0, and 1 third. That's, that's B inverse. Um, what would be a way I could check that independently to see if that really is the inverse? Multiply B and B inverse together. Multiply them together. Yeah, let's see. Um, I think we have time to multiply it in one order and just check it and see. And the, the reason I'm, I'm pointing out the check is because, you see, it's so easy to make a careless error in this arithmetic that um, if you're doing this on a test and you come up with this answer, how do you know you didn't make any careless errors? So I think if you have the time on an exam, you can go back and check it by multiplication, and you'll know if you have the right answer or not. So let's find out. And just to be different, I'm going to put B inverse on the left, because I should be able to multiply these in either order. Uh, so I have negative 3, 2, 0, negative 4, 1, negative 2 thirds, 1, 0, 1 third. <coughs> And I multiply it times b, 1, negative 2, negative 4, 2, negative 3, negative 6, negative 3, 6, 15, equals. Now, we're keeping our fingers crossed. We should get i sub 3, the identity matrix with 1's on the main diagonal, zeros everywhere else. Well, let's see if that happens. The first entry, the first entry, that's the first row times the first column. That's uh, negative 3 plus 4 is 1, plus 0 is 1. Yep. And the next entry over here, first row, second column, first row, second column, that's uh, 6 minus 6 plus 0 is 0. Well, it's looking good. 
Now if I go to the first row, third column, that's going to be uh, 12 minus 12 plus 0 is 0. Yeah, it looks like it's working out fine. Um, so I tell you what, if you finish checking these numbers, you should get these values for the other entries. And that's, that's a check to see if this um, if this product, or if this matrix is your inverse matrix. Of course, there's, there's really an underlying question here, and that is, why would you want to find the inverse of a matrix anyway? And uh, that's, what our, that's what our next problem will be about. But let me just fill in a little bit of information here before we go on. If a matrix has an inverse, like B has an inverse, then the matrix, a is set, uh, matrix B is said to be invertible. B is invertible you will see that term used in a lot of textbooks. A matrix is invertible means it has an inverse. Now that doesn't mean you can flip it over. We're not talking about a reciprocal. It means that this matrix has a, another matrix that goes with it whose product together will make the identity matrix. And the inverse is written with a negative one on there, but that does not mean one over B. That's merely a symbol to represent the inverse. <coughs> There's another name for a matrix that has an inverse. B is said to be non-singular. B is non-singular. Uh, in other words, it isn't alone, but it has sort of, a, sort of a mate. It comes in a couple, you might say. And this is its mate over here, B inverse. So it isn't alone, um, but it's non-singular. Now, if a matrix doesn't have an inverse, and I would know that when I reduce my matrix because I would not have been able to get the, in, the identity matrix on the left. In that case, let's say we call that matrix C. Matrix C is not invertible if it has no inverse. And another term is to say that C is singular. So because it doesn't have a, a mate or, a, a, or an inverse matrix, so we say it's singular. You know what this reminds me of is when I was in high school, we had high school dances, and uh, you'd go to the dance, either stag or drag, and uh, stag meant you went alone, so you were like a, a buck at the dance, see, so, so, uh, so you didn't have a date at the dance, so you went stag. If you went drag, it has different connotations these days. If you go drag, that means it's sort of a drag, you've got a date, so you can't flirt with other girls and so forth, so uh, it's sort of a drag if you have a date. So you, it's say you go stag or drag. Well, in this case, a matrix B is either uh, singular or non-singular, or not invertible or invertible. It's sort of the same thing. Okay, let's go back to uh, the green board, and I want to look at the next graphic <coughs> that we have here, and this has to do with the solution of a matrix equation. Now, suppose I have a system of equations, and I write it in matrix form, so that, um, let's see, my marker is getting a little weak here. Uh, matrix A, suppose this is the coefficient matrix, Matrix B is the, un, uh, matrix X is the unknown matrix, and matrix B is the constant matrix. In other words, it'd be something like this. Uh, two, five, six, three. That would be matrix A. Matrix X might be XY, and matrix B might be 10, 14. Now you see, this is the matrix, a matrix equation that represents a system of equations. And the system of equations says 2X plus 5Y equals 10, and 6x plus 3y equals 14. Yeah, we talked about this just a little while ago. Now, if you have a coefficient matrix that is uh, invertible or non-singular, if it has an inverse, what we would do would be to multiply on the left by the inverse. And if I multiply on the left by the inverse, then if I shift the parentheses over, A inverse times A, what's that product going to be, A inverse times A? I. That's the identity matrix, I. And over here I have A inverse B. But now, what is the identity matrix times X? X. Is X. So I can solve the matrix equation up here. I can solve for my unknown matrix by taking A inverse times B. 
Let's go to the next graphic and we'll see a system of equations where we'll use this inverse matrix to solve it. Um, you see there we have a 2x plus y is 12, 5x plus 3y is 28. Let me just write that on the board here. Uh, 2x plus y is 12 and 5x plus 3y is 28. Now you see if I write this in matrix form, this would say 2, 1, 5, 3 times xy equals 12, 28. Now, if I want to solve for x, for the matrix x, with entries xy, then what I do is I multiply the inverse of this matrix times 12, 28. Now, if I remember correctly, the entries of this matrix were 3, negative 1, negative 5, 2. I think we just calculated that a little while ago. I said, we're going to come back and use that in a moment. So that's the A inverse, this is the B. You see, here's my matrix X, here's my A inverse, here's B. So if I multiply the two matrices on the right, I'll have my unknowns X and Y. So let's see, what would these entries be? Well, for X, that's going to be 36 minus 28 is 8. And for Y, that's going to be uh, negative 60 plus 56 is negative 4. So what this tells me is x equals 8, y equals negative 4. And I have just solved the system of equations up here using an inverse matrix. Now I wouldn't say that this is the fastest way to solve a 2 by 2 system, but knowing about the property of an inverse matrix and how you can use it to solve a system of equations becomes important in later courses, even if it's not the fastest way, it's an important thing to know about. Um, well, let's see. Today we've talked about uh, the arithmetic of matrices, adding, subtracting, multiplying matrices, multiplying by a scalar. <clears throat> then we've also talked about uh, matrix equations, and then we looked at how to calculate the inverse of a matrix. I'll see you next time for episode 25.